This review has been made possible by Toyota of Naperville. As you know, Toyota has tons of brand new Toyotas available for purchase, but did you know that they also have a remarkable selection of used cars? Head on over to toyotaofnaperville.com and look through hundreds of used cars for sale right now. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2018 Fiat 500 L Lounge. Up front is a 1.4 liter turbocharged inline four, and down below is a six speed automatic transmission. Now I'm super excited to be driving this year 500 L because I recently drove a 500 X and I got a headache because that car made me so angry. I thought that that was a terrible car and hands down so far the worst car I've reviewed of 2021. So let's see if the L changes things and I'll tell you what, I've been driving this car for about 15 minutes, and I can already tell you that it's massively better. So let's get back to that 1.4 liter turbocharged inline four. I'll put the horsepower and torque up on the screen, as well as now I will put the fuel economy. It's just a little 1.4, it's found in the regular Fiat 500 as well, and the Fiat 500 Abarth, as well as the 124 Spider. And while it is sporty in those applications, it's not really anything crazy here in the 500L because it is a larger vehicle. All right, we are warmed up here on the test track. 1.4 liter turbo. I don't get any type of modes, I believe. Here we go. Okay, so definitely a higher spooling turbo. Definitely a lot of turbo lag down low, which is what you want in this because when you're driving around town, you're not flooring it, you're not gonna use the turbo and you're gonna get better fuel economy. Once the turbo kicks in, fuel economy pretty much goes down the toilet. Like I said, paired to it is an automatic transmission. Nothing really too crazy. It's shifting, it's fine, it does the job. Last but not least, the 500L is front wheel drive. So let's talk about the interior. We have quite a bit to go through in here and a lot of good points, a lot of improvements over the regular 500X. Well, in front of me, I have three gauges. On the left is my speedometer. In the center is a screen as well as my fuel and coolant temperature. And on the right is my tachometer. Let's get back to that screen. I'm gonna cycle through a bunch of information that can be shown on the screen. This is very typical of like Jeeps, Dodges, things like that. I and mean, because Fiat now owns them, they all share parts. And this is the same screen you would find in like a Dodge Dart or a Jeep Renegade or things of that sort. However, I like the information that you can get in the screen and that's pretty much it. I like the look of the gauges overall. I think they're clean and simple and relatively modern. On the steering wheel on the left, I have controls for that screen and the gauges. I have my phone options and on the right, I have my cruise control options. Again, I like the look and feel of the steering wheel. The leather is really nice in my hands. It feels modern and fresh, as well as somewhat luxurious. This isn't like a cheap leather. This feels like a nice leather. And I like the bright, shiny Fiat emblem in the center. To the left of me, I just have a vent. And then on the door, I have my power mirrors, power locks, and power windows. Moving into the center, I have a vent all the way up at the top of the dash. And then I have my infotainment screen. So a couple things to note here. First of all, this is way larger than the Fiat 500X infotainment screen, which I love. I love the dials, great tactile feedback. We have a couple things we can go to. We can go to trip here, range, current consumption, trip A, trip B, which is very, very nice. It also keeps like average speed and distance and travel time for those trips, which is really, really cool. However, as you're starting to notice, uh, not very responsive. I can connect a media device, of course, radio, things like that. Nothing else really too crazy. I can go to my map. I do have navigation, things like that. Of course, nav down here. You connect audio settings, things like that. Can also turn the screen off if I'd like. One thing before we get going here is the backup camera. Of course, it does have a backup camera. However, the lines do not adjust when I turn the steering wheel wish they did and it has okay clarity it's not the best in the world however this is still a fiat product so i'm not really expecting it to be 4k hd it works it does the job and that's all i can ask it to do down below the infotainment screen i do have my climate controls i have dual zone very modern looking here they have little digital readouts on them and i really like the look of them i like the tactile feedback of them they click when you change things and i absolutely adore that overall i think this is a huge win 
as well as down below that, I have my traction control, aux in, USB in, and my 12 volt outlet, which they picked up the Chrysler thing of putting a key or battery on the outlet. So because it has a key on it, this will only operate when the vehicle is on. When the vehicle turns off, it no longer gets power. If it had a little battery symbol, it would be on all the time. Then I have a little cubby and the shifter itself. The shifter itself is the same out of the Fiat 500X. It has this little button on the side to hold the shift boot on. A little bit of Italian leather work there, which I like. And it does say 500 down at the bottom. Then I have two cup holders, so we'll do a big freaking bottle test. And unfortunately, the Fiat 500L does not pass the big friggin' bottle test. It's just too skinny. Now we got to talk about the seats. The seats are decently comfortable. They are leather as well as they are perforated leather and they are heated. The heating controls are on the side of the seats. But what I don't like about the seats is that they are not power. So they do have power lumbar support, but that's it. Up and down, forward and back is not power and the bar in which to move the seat forward and back is really low to the ground. I wish it was a little bit higher up so I didn't have to reach as far, especially if like it's snowing, there's slush on the floor mats, my wet shoes, whatever it is, I don't wanna be reaching down there. Now, arguably, when I own this car, I would have my seat set and that's it, but if I did have to adjust it, it would just be a pain. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats, so let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2018 Fiat 500L and a couple things. First of all, my head is hitting the ceiling. I don't believe I can lower the seat. So height is actually a little bit of an issue. So I'd have to slouch down. Not the end of the world, but something to be noted. I am 5'11". My head is hitting the ceiling. I do get a cup holder down here, which is a very sad excuse for a cup holder. And I do get a USB charger, but that's about it. I, of course, have power windows and things like that. What I do get to enjoy is the large sunroof. So it starts above in front of the driver and passenger and comes all the way back here. Of course, we have the sunshade as well. But I really get to enjoy this sunroof. I love it, or panoramic moonroof, whatever you want to call it. Really, really great absolutely love that now we'll go take a quick look at the cargo space all right so around the back of the fiat 500l and first of all this looks very european to me but reach down here no power tailgate however i do have helping struts i do have this nice privacy cover love that but then i have this so this can come out and i can slide it it's hard to do one-handed, but I can have it go down there and cover up, you know, all the stuff down there. But if I'd like to raise it up just a little bit, I can put it up here and now it's a higher shelf. Allows access down here as well as up here. And this is actually nice and sturdy. So I like that customization that you get. I'm not really 100% sure why you would need to do that. I guess to separate things and whatnot, but that's a feature nevertheless. I don't get a 12 volt outlet, it seems. It seems like maybe I would get one on a higher trim level, but overall, I really, really like it. Another thing I really like about the interior is off to the right, I do have a little glove box. On top, there's a lower glove box, but also an upper glove box for little things. And it has this nice fabric-y material on it. it, says 500. I like the look of it and the usability of it. Now we got to talk about the looks. I actually kind of like the look of the 500L. It is big and it definitely looks like a bloated 500, but that's literally what it is. I wish that this wasn't called the 500. I wish that this was called something else because I feel like Fiat is just riding that legacy of the old Fiat 500s, you know, Luigi from the movie Cars, you know, that sort of old fashioned style. I feel like they're just kind of milking that for all they can where this really should be like the 600 or like the 1400 or something because of the engine displacement. Whatever it is, I, I don't feel like this should really still be called a 500, but it is what it is. One more thing I want to talk about before we get to my final thoughts is the visibility. Now the visibility isn't good nor bad. However, it's definitely taking some getting used to because of the front windshield. You may not notice it on the outside video, but on the inside here, the windshield is actually three different pieces of glass. I have my front windshield, of course, but then I have these two little side windows, which if I didn't have, I would have huge blind spots. But because it's not all one piece, I have these giant pillars in my field of view. Now what you're seeing right now is GoPro footage, which is a wide angle lens, which makes the pillars not look so thick. But from where I'm sitting, there are two giant thick pillars in my field of view. And I really wish I didn't have those. 
So my final thoughts here on the 500L. Well, like I said, I drove the 500X and it upset me so much that I'm still shaking from it a few weeks later. The reason I hated the 500X is because it really felt cheap and it felt like Fiat gave it no time. This was emphasized by the fact that the climate control button had the picture of a Jeep Renegade on it and not even a Fiat 500. They didn't even take the time to switch the button. Well, this, this feels like they took the time. This feels like they put effort into it. The leather in here and the materials in here are a lot nicer than the 500X. The screen, the multimedia center is way better. The engine is better. The driving experience is better. I have better features in here. Overall, 10 out of 10, this is a completely better and different car than the Fiat 500X. I would avoid the Fiat 500X like the plague, but this, yeah, I could get behind this. This starts to make sense. It just feels nicer in here. It feels better and it feels different. It feels different than other vehicles that I've driven, which is hard to find today. You know, people will ask me, what would you pick, a Toyota Corolla or a Honda Civic? And it's hard to say because there's very little differences. I don't feel like those cars are that different at all. But this, this feels different, this feels unique, and this feels like Fiat gave it a lot more thought than they did with their X. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Toyota of Naperville for letting me take out their Fiat 500L. This has been absolutely awesome and it really has changed my mind. Toyota has hundreds of cars on the lot. If you're not into Fiat's, if you're not into Toyota's, if you're looking for a new vehicle, Toyota of Naperville should be your first stop every time. They're absolutely awesome, great customer service, and I can't recommend them enough. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe. We would like to take care, guys.